Tom Lynch here for Keeneland, and we're joined by trainer Kenny McPeak to talk about Swiss Skydiver. And this is uh, your outstanding three-year-old filly that uh, you have nominated to the Bluegrass Stakes next week, as well as the Ashland. Where are you on your decision making? Well, it's still up in the air. We're uh, analyzing the PPs on both races right now. Um, you know, she's a really special filly. She's done everything right in the last three starts. Um, she's going to get weighed if we were to run her in the bluegrass. Um, and in an odd year, I've got another really good filly that we're intending on running in the Ashland. So um, I've never been one that, that would like to go into a race and knowing you're going to beat yourself with one or the other. Um, but they're two very, very good fillies on Bhutan, who's not stakes um, tested yet, but I think she's at quality. And, um, you know, the fact that we, not, we, we nominated Swiss Skydiver to the Derby, plus she gets weight from the Colts in this race. So there'll be some weight shift that might be interesting. So um, right now, nothing's set in stone, but um, we are kind of sniffing around at both spots and which direction we go still remain. I'll probably wait till the day of entries to decide. There, I did a little uh, research through or some help at, uh, with the folks at, at, at Keeneland, and um, she would, if she ran in the bluegrass, she'd only be the second Philly ever. Philly ran in 1944 and finished fifth, and actually that was one of the war years when the Keeneland meet was uh, contested at Churchill Downs. Really? So, you know, we're un under unusual circumstances again, so if she goes there, maybe it's inappropriate from from that standpoint do you you know do you think at all or, or consider at all historical things like that or do do owners do you think um you, you know what um yeah I, th I think it'd be really cool to have the first Philly to win the bluegrass we're not interested in running fifth to be honest but <laughs> <laughs> but we um yeah I think I think looking at the PP she's going to be the only graded stakes winner in the race much less three-time graded stakes winner and so um She'll get some attention. Speaking of that, uh, she has really come to hand, starting with that race down at Gulfstream in late March. Uh, she had run to the fairgrounds of the Rachel Alexandra and uh, ran okay, but has really taken it to another level with the, uh, the race in Florida, the race at Oaklawn, and then you went out and won the uh, Santa Anita Oak, shipped her all the way across country. Uh, what is it that made the light bulb come on for her? Well, definitely the two turns. Um, she's a filly that we tried to get into some two-turn races early in her career and through one thing or another either the race didn't fill or she got excluded or the timing wasn't right um, you know I really wanted to run her two turns in her second career start and um, that race didn't go going two turns so we ran her another one turn mile and then we were looking for a race in Florida this winter um, I had a choice of running her in the Sun Coast or, or the the race she ran at Tampa, can't recall the name of the race, but she got hung really wide and got beaten that day. But then, then it, since then, it's been a matter of let's get her stretched out to two turns. And, and since we've done that, she's, you know, she's hit nothing but bullseyes. Uh, tell us about the other filly you mentioned, Anne Vuitton, that uh, you're pointing to the Ashland. So, yeah, this is a really good filly in her own right. She's an Uncle Mo filly. She's, um, her last race was ultra impressive. She's a filly that um, was supposed to run in the fantasy also at Oaklawn, but got excluded from the race. And we subsequently ran her in a small stake at Gulfstream on the grass. And I don't think the grass is her, her favorite surface, but um, she's a good filly in her own right. Her and Swiss Skydiver work regularly together. Um, there's not a big split between the two. And I think if she runs her best race, she's right there in the thick of it. And anything else you're pointing to the stakes at Keeneland next week? I'm a little light other than these two. Um, I think, um, you know, other than the focusing on these two fillies, um, we'll probably be making 20 or 30 starts over the short meeting. And like I always do, I tend to focus a lot of my, my horses uh, towards the Keeneland racing, and, and that's not going to change. But as far as stakes, just these couple. With Swiss Skydiver, whichever race she does go in, would you have one more start uh, be before the next race? Well, um, you know, that's up in the air. You know, the Alabama's probably a great race. Um, we won that a couple of years ago, and um, you wouldn't want to turn your nose up at a race like that. But we'd also want to time it so that we felt like coming into the Kentucky Oaks would be, you know, the ultimate, you know, final race of, uh, her, you know, her three-year-old competition. 
Um, you know, with these young horses, you, you only get so many chances to run against straight threes. And um, I'm not sure what other races are out there on the agenda beyond the, uh, the Alabama. But um, definitely want to win a Kentucky Oaks with her. You have uh, two very exciting uh, three-year-old fillies there and uh, exciting that we're going to see, get to see them run at Keeneland next week. Uh, Kenny, thanks so much and good luck. Thanks, Tom.